What's up, T people? This is Danny. And this is James from TDB bringing you episode number 204. We have some raw pour from 2006. It came from Taiwan. This is uh, oh. some fancy stuff. Uh, fancy. Yep, Wuxiang Miaopin uh, from uh, Yongqin Hao. So we've uh, reviewed a few of their teas yeah. in the past. Um, so stored in Tainan of Taiwan, which is in southern Taiwan. Cool. I'm going to give this a rinse. Three big chunks. How much gram, how many grams of leaf are you using? Yeah, so we're using approximately my standard uh, raw pour ratio, which is about five grams for 75 milliliters. Cool. Let's take a quick smell. That vegetable patch. A little some sweet, sweet vibes going on in there too, but a lot of the sort of vegetable patch. It smells dark. Yeah, earthy, um, gritty flavor profile. Looking forward to tasting it. There's definitely some sweetness though that I smelled in there too, so I think we'll be experiencing that in the front of this tea, and then um, if, if we were to brew this out 20 times or whatever, probably towards the end as well. So, ooh, good color already. Yep. <clears throat> and uh, looking forward to this. Yeah. Yep. And we're going to get through you know, five or six infusions. Cool. And so the logic, we, we brew a little bit particularly because we do the show. And so we have to brew quickly, wake more quickly than we would normally. Yeah. That being said, though, would you in a normal session take advantage of the time um, – of the little amount of time between steepings to just kind of continuously brew out this tea? You could. It might depend how many people you're serving for, sure. how fast you want to drink, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, but one advantage to doing that would be just that it's hot already. Right. You're getting it in. Right. Uh, so, like, if you were to pour this into, like, a cooler vessel, then the temperature it would settle on would be lower. Right. Because it would kind of average out or whatever. That's right, so. yeah. So, uh, just different things to take into account, and it sort of becomes very intuitive after you do it for a while. So, That's for sure. something that I don't totally think about, uh, but yeah, it's definitely something to take into account. Well, let's do it. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Mm. Yeah, like classic, like vine. Tomato vine, a little bit of tartness, a little bit of acidity, and that acidity is not citrus, citrus at all. It's the sort of, yeah, sort of like that tomato, cherry tomato. So sort of in that right. Earth, right. earth realm of things. Yeah. Uh, for me, I also get a lot of feelings in the throat, uh, a lot of like sweetness <clears throat> and stuff. Mm, yeah, I mean, yeah. There's the, the sweetness as well from the, the tomato -y. Um, this of this. Mm. That's good. Some it's viscous already. Leathery notes to it. <coughs> and usually we expect these teas to pick up in viscosity um, for the first four or five infusions. Mm. Of course, it depends how you do it, but um, I would expect this to be the same. Mm. It's leaving my mouth with a little bit of that um, um, medicinal menthol uh, feel. So it's not a pucker. But it's more of like a cooling. Yeah, and um, and I think you get a little bit of that in the aroma yeah, too. Yeah, definitely. Um, mm -hmm. So that like minty menthol uh, ness to it, and I actually enjoy that quite a bit. Oh yeah, pour uh, sort of like that combined with like woodiness or mm -hmm. some like the flavors you get for some of these old teas. Yeah, which is crazy to think about, right? Like an old age tea picking up a mentholy medicinal flavor. But that's one of the beauties of these um, these raw pu'eres. They really evolve and change and become very different. And wow, look at the liquor on that. Getting darker and darker. Yeah. Mm. Good overall um, residual flavor. I'm not feeling it quite in my deep in my chest, but kind of in my throat a little bit. Me too. Yeah. Um, yeah. And still very early for this tea. So, cheers, guys. Cheers. Really nice smoothness and softness to it. Yeah, um, I agree. Getting more fruits in this infusion. Hmm. Like which, which dark, dark fruits, I'd say. Mm -hmm. um, sort of maybe 
some dark plums. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so it doesn't taste. There's it doesn't have that tropical fruitiness, but it does yeah. have a very sweet aftertaste. Mm -hmm. It's not bright. Uh, so like some of those teas that we've had before, Denny pointed out the tropical fruits. I'd say that that <clears throat> right. is much brighter. This is more in like the dark fruit category. Mm -hmm. Mm. Really mouth watering right yeah. now. Yeah. I'm mm. sitting here just experiencing it. Sweetness. Yeah. Really good. Mm. This is great. This might not be. Well, I don't know. These these flavors themselves are a little bit. Uh, I don't want to say aggressive because they're not too strong, but they're just atypical. You're not gonna. You know. I think when someone drinks a tea, they're not gonna expect these sorts of flavors. They're balanced perfectly. Um, they, there's a lot going on. Wow, look at that, just get darker and darker, yep. my goodness. Um, so, there's absolutely nothing wrong with any of those flavors. We, have been, you know, after drinking enough tea, you kind of learn to appreciate these new novelty, and then there's the, like, beautiful depth of that weirdness being really good. Um, but this might not be quite as approachable to, um, a novice tea drinker, not because it's too strong, not because it's too tannic, but just because the, the actual taste profile is a little bit atypical. Too unfamiliar. Yeah. yeah. Potentially. So yeah. what Denny is basically saying is don't feed, don't necessarily serve this to your mom. Give her the duck shit. <laughs> the good duck shit. Watch episode yeah. 203. Watch the previous episode. That <laughs> might be a better tea to give to your mom. It's also much more inexpensive than this tea. <laughs> All right. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Mm, really getting into that sort of mm, really deeper, earthier, almost that minerally wooey flavors, and then also just the the vininess of this is just ramping up. But it's still really well balanced. Like there's no bitterness in it, or maybe just a hint in my. I, I think there's a little tongue, bit, yeah, yeah, but not too much, and it's not tannin tannic or or puckering at all. And now I'm like. Also really experiencing yeah. it deeper in here, too. Yeah, I think there's a lot of complexities to be had, especially in the throat. I think this tea has a lot of sort of throatiness going mm -hmm. on, which can be a little bit, I think, to, to go back to our previous point, a little bit tricky to pick up on if you haven't uh, experienced it before or mm -hmm. you're just starting to get into these teas. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah. uh, it's really nice. Lots of different aftertastes going on. Very sweet fillings left in the mouth. Mm. This is this is a great tea. Yeah, really, really yummy. Great to experience it with a fellow uh, tea weirdo. I would encourage people out there to be doing something similar with these sorts of teas. Um, because I think this would be <laughs> a little bit weird for the average person. So, um, And some raw pours aren't. I mean, some raw pours are accessible to the very beginning um, tea drinker. Jesus. I was just getting. I am darker. leaning on this tea pretty heavy, by the way. Darker, so yeah. I've reheated the water, and I'm not quite. I'm giving a little bit more than the flash tea. No, so. I'm. T I'm. There's more tannin. You know, I'm experiencing more of the, mm -hmm. um, the raw, um, ness of this. Uh, yeah. But mm. Mm. really good. Feeling energized. <laughs> Take a smell that. Nice big leaves. And how would you say mm. the storage for this has been? Good. Really, really clean. And, um, yeah, I mean, we just dove right in, and uh, we're getting a lot of good viscosity out of it, too, which is kind of surprising because I, I, I couldn't tell I wasn't um, feeling the um, compression. But you were using three pretty compressed, it seemed to be compressed yeah. uh, sections. But now the guy one is nice and yeah. full. I'd say they're moderately compressed. They came apart pretty nicely, okay. like Denny remarked. And I was kind of... Given it a little bit more than a flash infusion because of right. that, so we could uh, get, get to that yeah, tea a little, little bit faster. But but you would expect because of compression, and if it wasn't just totally loose leaf, you would expect there if it were to be dirty that you would it would kind of continue to be dirty as the yeah. leaves expanded. In this case, no. yeah. And I would uh, to answer the same question about storage. I would say this tea is definitely not quite dry storage, uh, right. but it's clean and uh, the tea has definitely aged mm -hmm. uh, in that time. For so. Sure. Uh, if this tea were stored in Los Angeles or something like that, it tastes very different. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. Mm. Nice sweetness coming in again. 
This is just getting better and better. Maybe a little bit lighter on the um, on the mouthfeel, actually. Yeah, I feel like it's softening out a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Mm. But I feel that leather that James was talking about is coming out a little bit more. Maybe almost a little bit of smokiness. Really subtle. Um, and that's kind of towards the three quarters of the way through the, the yeah. experience. And, but mm. this is good. This is the kind of tea that, yeah, James and I sort of sitting back and like yeah. giving it a second. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think it's the right way. I, I think we drank a little bit fast for the initial part of this. Right. The energy is really starting to get me. I'm starting to feel a little bit heated. Yeah, absolutely. Um, would you be able to tell um, that this, if you had this without knowing what it was, would you be able to place it as a uh, semi-aged Rob Pour? I think so, yeah. Uh-huh. I think it, it definitely fits in the category, mm-hmm. but um, there's a lot going on in it. It's really delicious and really tasty, so mm-hmm. uh, yeah. So what steeping is this? Are we on? I think we're on six, so maybe we'll do one more after this on camera. Cheers. More tannin. I'm getting more grain uh, in this one. Hmm. Interesting. It's not actually the direction I expect it to involve. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. That sort of oat meal kind of thick creaminess, graininess is what yeah. I'm getting out of it. Yeah. I think maybe I'm a little bit overbrewed for that one. Um, how are you finding the texture of this? It's great. Great, it's viscous and thick. This, especially the beginning steepings were really thick and sweet, which um, isn't a given necessarily. But I really enjoy that experience of the, these sorts of teas. Um, man, this tea is gonna go forever, huh? Yeah, I'm wow. still not brewing it for very long at all. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Whoo, I am feeling. Yeah, and I think this will be our last steep on, on the camera. Uh, getting a little bit, feeling that heat. Feeling the psychoactive uh, tea properties. Yeah. Um, the, the pharmacological. <laughs> hashtag pharmacological. <laughs> I think the aroma has changed as well. Lightened. Um, and gotten a little bit more um, leathery. Uh, there's a really nice, like, residual... Uh, sweetness and like a little bit of that like leather staying in my mouth and then just from a body perspective I almost feel a little bit lightheaded um, and uh, I'm like feeling really like warm and energized how do you think this tea would have been uh, consumed much younger probably pretty bad probably pretty strong really strong yeah because yeah. this is pretty strong and yeah. It's definitely been aged, yeah. Yeah, you can taste the age on it. It is mellowed out clearly. I think it would have been, like, very affronting. Um, so this is, it was 11 years old, right? Uh, yeah, 2006. So, yeah, 11 years you old. know, who knows what this would be like in 20 years, or in another nine, rather. Um, Probably but, really delicious. Yeah, yeah, but even softer and more approachable. Um, so... But yeah, I suspect this tea was probably pretty intense to start. It's pretty potent. Yeah, yeah and I agree with you, too, about the storage. Like, you can tell this is aged... Uh, successfully so I think had it also been stored differently it would probably be like pretty strong really really yeah. strong yeah yeah unless we're talking about like even more humidly which right would have metal it but, yeah but, but this is not potentially this is strong tea this is, is it's uh and I think time has been for the most part pretty good to it I agree yeah cheers cheers hmm more acidity for me in this one. Yeah. Uh, we reheated the water there. It's still producing some mouth pucker, actually. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. More acidity. I'm really, yeah, I'm really experiencing those sort of like leathery, um, little tannin residual thing. I'm like, trying to focus <laughs> this is one of the more psychoactive teas i think that uh we had on the show yeah and mm. you could tell like this is how we consume the tea we consume it we're like all right we're going we're going we're consuming we're having one cup two cup three cup four cup and we slow the fuck down oh, and, yeah and now we are drinking slowly which is probably how we should have done it to start with yeah mm. um but very good though um and uh 
Yeah, this tea, this tea has evolved a lot in the cup um, in surprising ways. Um, really great overall energy. I'm definitely experiencing the tannin now. Um, I wonder if this tea will cool off a little bit and how it will evolve later on. Um, mm, yeah, delicious. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. So, uh, I, how can someone find out more about tea, Danny? Well, James, uh, subscribe to our YouTube videos below somewhere. I don't know. Anywhere. Just hit the subscribe button. It should be red probably, maybe. Um, <laughs> follow us on uh, tdb.org where we're going to be posting, where we post our, our video content as well as articles in between episodes and a whole bunch more. Um, comment on the video with, uh, what should they comment on this video about? Tell us how awesome it was. Or, or, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Pure narcissism. Just no yeah, comments. This video was tremendous. Oh, uh, it's the best, oh, uh, it's okay. the best TDB video ever. Uh, <sighs> Tell, tell us your honest feedback for this video. Sure. Tell us what you would like to see on the show. Yeah. Great, uh, great points. Don't take it too seriously. Yeah. <laughs> if people want to pick this up, is that uh, possible? It is. Okay. Uh, so you can go to uh, contact Emmett, uh, mm. who sent us the sample. Mm -hmm. uh, I will say that this tea sells for $800, so uh, maybe, uh, depending on who you are, it right. may or may not be attainable. It is a big cake. It's 500 grams. Okay. So, uh, so it's a lot of money for tea, though. It let's is be, a lot of money. Let's so be realistic about it. So for folks who want to experience this tea, maybe try a sample before you you go all in on it. Yeah. Um, it has, I think, probably I'll speak for James and I. I think it has both of our praises, though. Really, really tasty. Great evolution of, of the brew. And I think also if you're if you're going to be storing it, an even dryish storage is gonna is gonna continue to be. It's great. strong. It's, this tea will be still kicking in many years. So. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, um, so, and if you folks want to learn more about tea in general, check us out on tdv.org. Like I said, subscribe, like the video if you like the video. Comment below with some um, stuff that you want us to drink. If you have had a really crazy rough food like this, let us know too. Yep. And we'll see you guys next time for episode two hundred and five. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers.